Sayyidi, in case of global power outage and we cannot play beatific sounds, what to do in tafakkur to avoid meditating in silence? You can recite these. If a day comes when there's no power, that's a different energy that will be opening upon the earth when this electricity stops flowing and Allah open a different energy upon the earth and energy from the soul and from good actions and good deeds. So alhamdulillah whatever people recite then through that recitation they make their, their connection and they can recite in silence and however else Allah opens. If they have a jama'ah and they're doing their zikr and they're doing their meditation in the zikr but it becomes more difficult. That's why we said that to meditate now before those types of calamities and difficulties open upon the earth because everything is of a leisure, everything is made easy now that Allah gives us this life of ease and with this time that we've been given we're accountable that what we did with it. But if we're waiting for only you know destruction to come before we sit and try to make our connection it's going to be significantly harder. But those who've made their connection then they don't need the sound means they, their connection and the sound was to make that connection, build their practices. Once they become secure and strong in their practices they don't need the sound. If it should go off or there's somewhere where there's no sound their connection and their ability to connect is strong and has a powerful connection, at that time of difficulty then the power of that connection would ultimately increase inshaAllah by Allah sending a different energy to the heart of the believers inshaAllah. But now is the time for people to practice and, and to make their connection, to make their bargain as Allah describes in Surah at tawbah that we bought from the believers the dunya and we gave to them akhirah in exchange means now is the time to make that trade. So we say, okay Ya Rabbi from the time I was putting into work I don't need to put that much time into it now, let me put more time into my soul. And then Allah accepts that time and says, okay you could be making you know from your money and your work, now you've traded that for time towards your akhirah and as a result Allah begin to open inshaAllah more and more of their connection Prophet opening and nazar begin to open upon them. So now is the time to make the bargain when we sort of supplement one, slow down one and spend more time on making the connection, more time on our ibadah and our worshipness inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Does high ringing in the e during tafakkur have any reality? Well, everything has a reality. So either you're feeling an energy, feeling a presence, becoming more attuned to other types of energies, everything has a reality. So alhamdulillah the, the hmm like a humming sound is a, again a more of a sensitivity towards hearing energy and the different recitations of beings that are around you. So everything has a reality. Do you have to focus on it? No. Do you have to try to listen to it? No. The focus should always be on the meditation and making the connection. Everything else comes as a distraction that you don't have to try to look and, oh I saw something now I'm going to chase trying to see that or if I heard something I'm going to keep trying to see if I can hear that. All of that is a distraction, just making the connection is what's important, asking to be dressed in that connection and to feel the energy of that connection inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum as Sayyidi, what's the difference between the power on Nisfi Shaban and Laylatul Qadr? What is the difference of the power? Mm. Or... Different uh, writings and different blessings means that what Allah described for Laylatul Qadr has its dressing and the Laylatul Nisfi Shaban that remember that what the common people do and what those whom follow awliya and khawas like the elite is something different. That those whom follow the, the way of awliyaullah and the tariqahs they basically live that life every day. 
every day is a chasing of Laylatul Qadr, every day is, is a is a shab al because they pray their Salatul Awabin and asking for istighfar means they're doing these Qiyam al-Layl, they're doing their, their Ramadan and their Taraweeh, they're doing Qiyam al-Layl. Taraweeh is Qiyam al-Layl where they pray at night, they meditate at night, means they, they, they do all these special practices all the time. So comes Nisf shaban then it's a specific tajalli that Allah is writing the destinies of souls. So then they prepare themselves to have good deeds, good actions, they give from generosity, they try to get the attention of Prophet that Allah to take away any difficulties that were being written and to magnify all goodness. That if there's any good in it Ya Rabbi and that it's coming my way I'm in need of it now and to multiply that goodness. So those are nights of observation and ibadah, they pray hundred rakahs and then the dress and the light and the, the power that's dressing then has its own flavour, its own reality. And then Ramadan is again 30 nights of that power, 30 nights of Allah dressing from the secret of Qur'an but if we've been following these seven months all of them are power because it's all moving to the Lord of power. Means we're asking to move into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad which is manzil Qur'an. So every day and every night and every action is towards that qudra, is towards that ocean of power and to follow the way of the ulul am, those whom Allah has granted in authority. As a result their whole lives are following the people of Qadr, the Abdul Qadrs, the servants of Qadr. And as a result they're being dressed by these blessings, dressed by these realities and we've described before in the hadith of uh, muraqabah and tafakkur that if you do one hour of tafakkur Prophet described it's like 70 years of worship. Well that's an Abdul Qadr, that's a servant of immense power because his one hour is 70 years of your worship, it's just one hour. If he goes into one hour of tafakkur it's 70 years of your life, it's basically your lifetime. Allah is saying that if you reach Laylatul Qadr we're going to grant you a thousand months. But the one whom is doing muraqabah Prophet is describing that he's receiving the tajallis of somebody praying for 70 years. So it means that's a servant of power and as a result they are being dressed by Qadr, they're from the oceans of Qadr. And so any worshipness with them throughout the year is dressing any, any light coming from them is addressing, any teachings that coming from them is the reality of Laylatul Qadr. That anything given through them is like 30,000 times multiplied. One hour sitting with them is like 30,000 times multiplied. One feeding with them, eating with them is multiplied by 30,000. So these are the servants of Abdul Qadr, they're under Sifat al-Qadr because Allah dressed them from oceans of power. So means these are the, the khawas and the elite of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad So the people of tariqahs they do this all the time. But for common people whom Allah is wanting to dress them that they pray, they go for Jummah but they're missing the entirety of Islam. So as a result it's said, okay on this holy month of Ramadan at least one night sit and meditate and contemplate, at least the last 10 nights isolate and seclude yourself with etika. So you can see those are like mercies to a nation that moves so fast, Allah says, slow down a bit, a, a bit so that you can receive these blessings. And then you compare with the tariqah teachings that the being taught here is they're asking that every night. Every night make itikaf, every night after everyone goes to sleep sit, connect your heart, talk to Allah go into sujood, ask for forgiveness, ask Allah to draw you close to the reality of Prophet and that you want to feel from His oceans of power. And so that every night, every night becomes that reality. 
So Laylatul Qadr then has an immense dress and, and power that Allah dressing for the whole month. And then on the 27th the secret of Surat Al-Qadr begins to dress their soul. So that alhamdulillah has its, its reality and we have a, a tafsir on Surat Al-Qadr on the YouTube and on NurMuhammad.com. Many of these subjects also can be googled on Nur Muhammad because we can only talk a few minutes about it to sort of whet the appetite of people. Somebody out there has a specific interest, oh I want to know about power and oceans of power. You go to the source, there's literally probably 100,000 pages in articles on these subjects and these realities. So you go to the website and type in Qadr and power and then read through the articles and see which one you have an interest in and read them, print them and keep them as a reference. Anything that you have a liking to and that you read, you're taking yourself into that reality so that you begin to dream about it. Best at night to read these, late at night because you get a little bit tired, you read them and you want to sleep with that good action. If you sleep on a bad action you ruin the night. So by sleeping on a good action then you have a chance of going into that reality. So, Ya Rabbi that the, the sayings of Prophet is true, sleeping and wudu and I'm asking to go under the throne of Rahman and under your oceans of mercy and anything that I learn you'll take my soul to complete. So when's the best time to read these articles? Late at night. You focus, you read a few lines or a page that you can understand, you think about it, Ya Rabbi, take me into that dressing in that ocean, take me into that reality inshaAllah. And then the servant goes more and more into these understandings and more and more into these realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, when Mahdi Salam comes to this earth, which countries will be safe? Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, focus on that. <laughs> I, w I would focus on who will be safe. Uh, since we don't run countries and we teach people, most important is that to teach myself that it looks like the signs are coming, they're coming very fast. And Ya Rabbi, I want to be with Sayyidina Mahdi. I want to be clean, I want to be purified, I, I want to take away anger. I want to have the immense love for Prophet and make me to be Mahdiyoon. And again then I'll, I will gear my practices towards that reality so that I make my connection, bring that light into my heart, take away my bad characteristic because the tide right now is an overwhelming tide of negativity. And this is all that shaitan has to do. Remember shaitan doesn't bring destruction. Allah brings destruction. That's the difference between our cousins and uncles of other faith. Their, their teaching, their places of worship, they have a fear from the devil and they think the devil brings destruction. But the devil doesn't bring any destruction, it's Allah that will bring destruction and the angels of punishment. So it means then what am I responsible for? is the good character. So what does shaitan bring? He brings his waswas and bad energy. He brings a waswas and bad energy to make people to become bad, their character to be bad, their character to warrant God's punishment and that's all he wants. It's like having a bad friend in the car and telling you, step on the gas. And you're like, why? Just step on it, step on it now, right now, right now, right now. And as soon as you press the gas, woo, the police pull you over. And that's all that shaitan wants is that do something to anger Allah. So then the people become angry, crazy, violent and erratic. As a result the umbrella of mercy has left them. And that's all that's needed in the last days is then they're under qadab and you know the, the, the skies that are raining down difficulty, fire. If you don't have that umbrella of, of rahman and protection well then the, whatever is up there is falling down on people. So then the awliya and pious people their teaching and inspirations is make people run towards goodness and be under the, the shades of rahman and mercy. 
and treat people as you wish to be treated, have a good character as, as you wish your character to be good. And as a result of good character they have an umbrella of protection from God's rahmah and mercy, inshaAllah. And by that rahmah and mercy then they should find themselves to be safe and through these teachings and these practices they become Mahdiyoon. So we've described many times, why do you need the world to, to end to be with Sayyidina Mahdi when you can be with him now? So when you believe the world is ending your desire is dropping. When you begin to sit and meditate and contemplate that, I'm asking to connect with my shaykh, I'm asking to connect with all the, the blessed souls of Naqshbandiya and please take us to the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi and asking to visualize myself in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi and to be dressed by that light, blessed by that light. So I don't have to see your face, I'm not worthy of that. But I'm asking, Ya Sahib al Waqt Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi bi nazarakum that look upon me and dress me and guide me. I'm not worthy of looking for your face, that light my being can't handle, I'm nothing. Anyone who approaches with humility, Allah will dress them and bless them. InshaAllah, that this way is, is, is a merciful way and Allah is immensely merciful and anything in the way of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah grants. But when people come and say, I will see you, that's very arrogant. Who are you to see them and to look into their light and look into their face? That's, that's the sign of arrogance and that's never rewarded that type of character. But their teaching always for us is that say you're nothing, that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm begging of you just look upon me with pity with your light, I'm nothing. For the sake of my family, for the sake of my community, for the sake of all whom I love, if you look upon me and dress me with your light and your mercy that I'm not I'm of nothing, I'm no one of any goodness, that your, your rahmah and your mercy is great that Allah has dressed upon you. Put your nazar upon me and raise me with your light. Why shouldn't that be accepted and be dressed by that? And a servant who's approaching with those lights, inshaAllah will begin to feel more and more of their lights and more and more of their company. And as a result, their good deeds and their good practices, alhamdulillah, leads them to be then polished and then dressed by that reality and that's what we have to know is that now I don't know who, what and what country is going to be with Sayyidina Mahdi salam. that's not important. I'm just hoping I am and these countries and these borders are not what people know. When somebody says, this is Rome, Rome, this is this, they don't know what they're talking about. These, these banners and these, these countries they don't even understand who they are, who come today and who go tomorrow. And what Prophet meant by them is it will become clear when these battles all begin. Who someone supports today won't be supporting tomorrow and somebody who wasn't supporting today will be supporting tomorrow because the, the battle has not set yet. Once the battle begins, difficulties begin, immense difficulties begin, black and white will be very clear. Right now they're sifting through grey. One thinks he's on this side and he may be on the other side. That one thinks on that side, they'd be on this side. So these are not, these are not the, that people can read and just begin to talk from the politics of their head. These are isharat and guidance through the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And the guidance comes and adherence to hold to the way, hold to the, to the way that coming from Turkey and the ulama and awliya that have established that heart line into that region and hold firm into that and don't separate, don't worry about anything else. And there's going to be many battles and many difficulties opening upon the earth and we pray that Allah keep us with the pure hearted and that we have a pure heart and clean our hearts and to make our connections so that our connection is strong and those whom are destined for protection. Then Allah will disperse the, the spiritual beings, be them human, be them other, to guide people and protect people and show them how they're going to be protected. Nothing from what we understand upon this earth, 
that when Allah want to move a people into a region of safety once these difficulties begin and you're talking of uh, wars that are of atomic nature that mankind will look as if it's about to vanish off the face of the earth. At that time Allah has to open then for them to be safe with power of Kun fayakun Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. They'll be guided into move with their step into an ocean of safety in the direction and location where they're supposed to be. So it means these are very miraculous times, not a time that a mind can understand. All that needs to be understood now and the test that's coming now is honesty and loyalty. When you're loyal to your belief and that's why in this month is Surah Jinn and has to do with 72. Why? Why the heavenly kingdom has to do with Surah Jinn? Because the 72 is the gates of paradise, 27 is on earth but on 72 is in the heavens. The 72 Shuhadai Karbala, 72 Surah, why 72 and Surah Jinn? Well because it requires people to believe in the unseen. It's easy to have a political Islam in which you believe on only what you see but it's limited and powerless. And the reality of Islam is in the belief of what you don't see and what you don't see is far more powerful than what you do see. Belief in Allah's books, belief in Allah's angels, belief in Allah's prophets, all of the prophets, belief in the, the day of judgment, belief in, in destiny, good or bad whatever is written by Allah All of this and the belief in the last day. So all of this is now coming into testing. So means belief in the unseen, belief in the powers of the unseen, belief in these energies and these realities of malakut and the world of light. We're coming more into that. We said even belief of sound, they're going to be fighting with sound and light. Can you imagine the shaitans are fighting with sound and light and the believers don't even believe that? So then who's losing? Because we put out these videos and you see those other madhab people, what's this stuff, what's this, what's this stuff? They don't believe in, in sound and they recite the Qur'an? They don't understand the power of sound and they're following Qur'an. Qur'an is, is, is a recited as, as melodious, is a sound and is the most powerful sound of Allah So we should be the nation that most adherent to sound, most knowledgeable about sound, most powerful nation to use sound but the nation is asleep and wondering, what are we talking about? But the devils know they're going to be fighting with sound. And with light and with all sorts of uh, energies they're going to be using. All those energies then have to be understood by those who believe and that's why in the last phase people will be forced to believe because they're going to see, they're going to see how what people are doing, how they're doing it and what they're using. So they use lasers, they use light, they use sound mechanisms, all of that and that's why these trainings are so important. To understand that what Allah has given to us on our soul, how to bring out the reality of the soul, how to connect with connected ones. Means these souls and personalities that are coming, they are connected, they're power plants. And when Allah keep the company of these truthful servants, that one whom has not yet shown himself to everyone, he's a power plant Sayyidina Mahdi so we must be established, must be connected, must learn how to connect and to bring our line into His connection. And that's then the tariqahs and the role of tariqahs is to bring everybody into that connection to show and discipline on how to have their practices, how to have discipline, how to have good characteristics. So that's the importance of the tariqahs. They're not the final, they're not the, the end. They're just a means in to prepare people for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi They're not the ones to say that they are it, they are the power, no. They're just the means in which to train people, discipline people that now you understood, take your line and connect into his heart and that he keep us connected and uh, the role that has to be played upon earth. 
that's what's important. That's why we said all these other people whom are teaching and they are hadith translators, most of them may be photographic memory so their speech is fair seeming. Prophet described that their talk is fair seeming to people, means they're mesmerized by how they talk and fluency of their Arabic. And most of them have photographic memory so they remember many of these hadiths. But all of these teachings are of no value if the end result is not about the love of Prophet that the key to everything is the love, the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad is the teacher telling people that the key to our success is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that we have to be Muhammadiyoon, we have to be connected to that ishq, connected to that love, then they're good, they're connected, that's the key because that's the key that we know Dajjal is trying to hide. So he wants to take away the importance of Muhammadun Rasulullah وسلم, leave you with La ilaha illallah. But La ilaha illallah without Muhammadun Rasulullah وسلم, is of no value to anyone on earth. No one can make that connection without mifta rahmah, without the key of mercy and forgiveness. And that's the way Allah wanted the kalimah. It's not in one you just say, La ilaha illallah, but then you left behind Muhammadun Rasulullah So it's impossible, that's the key of our salvation, that's the key of our power and our qudra. So alhamdulillah, anyone teaching that then it's good. If they're not, they're wasting your time and then they become more and more inaccurate and then they become politicians and not da'is and not uh, people doing da'wah. We are people of dhikrullah, we gather for the sake of dhikr, we gather for Salli Ala Nabi as a byproduct they give permission to teach. But we're not people you turn on and give you political views, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa For those souls that really want to be with Sayyidina Mahdi and pass away, will they still be with Sayyidina Mahdi? InshaAllah yes, we said many times that the days that are coming many people can't make it on their physicality. That's why there will be so many calamities and every calamity takes away a physicality but leaves the light right there. So that's an immense recruiting, areas where 100,000, 200,000 will vanish. But it's not gone, those are just the bodies have gone. But the light, the arwah, the soul is just standing right there to be recruited and they will lend themselves and give themselves to that reality. As a result of their power and their allegiance and how quickly Allah will let them to grow in their reality will be an immense power for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad The same was happening in the time of Nabi Musa that as a result Pharaoh was hunting for Sayyidina Musa and Pharaoh asked that, I want all the boys, if, if this one who's coming to take me down is going to be a boy from Bani Israel, go out and take and kill all the children, all the male children of Bani Israel. As a result of that horrific action that everything in the equation has, has to be always balanced by its electrical charge, by the immensity of that negative action what he created was an immense amount of shuhada. Every child that was martyred towards his negative, the negative, the, the bad action that he did, the negativity went on to Pharaoh, darkened him, cursed him but the positivity was given to Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Musa then became immensely powerful because those souls they gave themselves to the reality of Nabi Musa because of that sacrifice, that they sacrificed, that they were sacrificed for that immense reality, they gave their allegiance to Sayyidina Musa and that's why Sayyidina Musa had an immense amount of spiritual power. <clears throat> able to part oceans by that power and by Izzatullah. 
So it means everything has its immense reality, nothing in Allah's way is wasted. So when Pharaoh and shaitan thought they were doing these things and they would, they would uh, slaughter Sayyidina Musa salam, they were giving him power and to put the whipped cream on top of it, Allah made Pharaoh to raise Nabi Musa in his house salam. Not only I didn't kill him, I made him million times more powerful and I put him in your house to be raised. You feed him, you give him everything and one day he'll come and he'll conquer you and topple your entire kingdom. This is Azimatullah and the greatness of Allah that can't be imagined and is never understood. So imagine now we look back at it, what about the time of Pharaoh? he didn't understand what he was doing? He said, no, Allah veiled him. InshaAllah Allah's might and majesty to dress and bless the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad with much more immense, much more immense powers and, and majestic beauty oceans inshaAllah. Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, does the super volcano Yellowstone have a spiritual meaning behind it? Hmm. Think in the last days, all these volcanoes have a meaning. Means that in the, the days of difficulty, the earth won't hold mankind. That the, the anger the earth has for mankind that are walking upon the earth and committing every atrocity against the Divinely Kingdom. And these are points and energy points that should have immense eruptions and immense, immense fires and eruptions coming from them. So definitely all these super volcanoes that they hold more fire under them than people could ever understand. The extent of the, the lava and the fire that they have within them and it's not even visible to people. So it means again Allah's kingdom and its understanding is something that can't be understood where people will be astonished where all this fire came from. On the top it looks peaceful, people going to the lake saying it's so beautiful and scenic but beneath it is an ocean of fire waiting to come out. So all, all of these are, are sort of immense, immense things and, and difficulties that will be opening upon the earth. But again those whom have their belief and that they're good with Allah and they've been destined for goodness then Allah has a means in which to protect them and to keep them from harm and difficulty, inshaAllah. But all of this is necessary. So if somebody tuning in and say, oh why is the shaykh keeping everything negative? No, it's the duty of every shaykh, real, any real shaykh is to take away the dunya desire. Doesn't mean the dunya doesn't ex exist for us but it's an existence is like it's there you to sleep comfortably, everything to be okay but you're not making big plans on it and you're not hoping it's going forever and that your hope is, I'm going to you know conquer this, I'm going to get this, I'm going to do that. The job of the shaykh is actually to take that taste away from you, that don't make these big plans. Dunya we live day by day but our plans are for akhirah and that Allah is happy with us. As a result of Allah being happy with us then Allah can send whatever He wants to send and as a result we take what we need and we give back to the, to the, the programs that are, are necessary for the people who are necessary but it's not overtaking the servant and as a result then their teachings are being, uh, bringing down the hubba dunya and making it hubba rasul and the love of Prophet Because if you try to talk to the lovers of dunya, we said before it's the reverse of binary. They love dunya so much that when you tell them to look to this horizon of akhirah and the hereafter, they see it as a dot, nothing, they don't see it. They say, I don't know what you're talking about Shaykh, what do you might mean hereafter? There's only here. So I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I don't have time to sit and chant, I don't have these things. So because of the binary code they are so heavy on their oneness of who they are 
They see Akhirah as a dot, nothing, they don't even see it as an existence. The shaykh's role is to reverse that on you, scare you that this coming. Even he's scared, now look Armageddon's here, we have the news is actually talking to us about Armageddon. This is going, this tank is going, this one is firing, this one, this… So what's happening now? Everyone's one is becoming very, very scared and they're becoming like a dust, like a dot. Oh my gosh, we're going to be like dust and dots. But what happens as a result? Every dot when it looks out on the horizon, what does it see? It sees the One, it sees Allah, it sees the Divine, the Kingdom, it, it sees that there's no power on this or it's going to help us except that One, the only One. So as a result of our code going down and becoming off, we see the Oneness of Allah InshaAllah. Salaamu Alaikum Peer Saab Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, In meditation or normal time when we do the hu breathing in and out, sometimes it's very cold and sometimes it's hot. What does this mean? The energy either being cold or hot, that's okay, alhamdulillah. Either it's going to be cold or hot, again that's a… Uh, <clears throat> the hot energy is a we'll call jalali, majestic. Majestic energy is heated and burns. So anytime we meditate and you feel heating up, it's jalali. And the English audience it's a majestic light, majestic light it crushes. So you may meditate, all of a sudden you feel the light coming, yeah, feel, oh my, I'm having a heart attack, I'm in a cold 911, don't worry, you're not going to die. And if you die, alhamdulillah you got to Allah even easier, you don't have to go through old age and all the difficulty. So jalali tajali, it crushes, heat and fire, so that's good. And then jamali is like a rain of mercy. When they feel the, the softness, they feel like crying, they feel like angels and energies and beatific energies are dressing. So after the fire and the crushing has to come the beatific energy. And so that you can feel sometimes in the breathing. You feel a heated energy because this Jalali Tajali is being breathed and breathing in through the entire br uh, breath like a dragon. And they bring like the reality of a dragon on their being that they're bringing in the breath, the majestic breath and they can breathe out that majestic breath. Later in spiritual battles their being will turn like that, their eyes will come a fire and from their breath will come a fire that they breathe in a majestic tajalli from Allah and as they breathe it out through their eyes come an immense fire that burn all these shayateen and nefarious beings, inshaAllah. Because at that time you don't want to send jamali. Can you imagine you're with them and <laughs> So the more majestic lights and then the softer lights inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi When becoming a wave reality, do we also see it with vision, also like solid items we can see waves? <clears throat> Anytime you're practicing, we said you can tune in your, your vision to understand waves. So if you're, if you're meditating at a park like a grassy area or you're sitting outside, look at a power line. So and then you focus on that power line and just kind of make yourself into a trance and then close the, the focus of the eyes. So the, the shutters, when the eyes are too open, the, the shutter speed is not allowing you to see that so you narrow your focus. So I think this is why the Asian culture has a strong affinity to the jinn nations.
right? The yellow, the yellow nations and Asian cultures, they have a very strong understanding from Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, China, Korea, all of them. And the narrowing of their eye vision allows them to see that realm much stronger because you're focused like on the lens of a camera, your lens this big and has to so you're not picking up what's happening. When they narrow the vision then they can see more of the plane of horizon what's happening. So when you want to imitate that you would sit and look at a power line and begin to narrow your vision. Focus, focus, you see the power line is now moving, you see its wave, you see all sorts of wave energy around a solid line. You can even begin to see the electricity in waves all around the line moving. So yeah, the wave energy is, is apparent for, if, for life that we focus on. But because shaitan doesn't want us to focus, all of our physical distractions block it. So we're so busy looking at this, this show, this, this image, this, this app, we don't stop to use our power that God has given to us. When all of that stops and there is no more electricity and TV and all of these things, then all of the spiritual faculties will become much more powerful, right? So imagine you're in a cabin, there's no electricity. Well then what happens at your eyesight? Every night at six o'clock everything goes dark. Your eyesight becomes much more powerful, you begin to see everything in the room. But because TV and distractions we're not, shaitan doesn't want us to see these things. So before they were seeing it that's why everybody was much more spiritual. Without a telephone your, your hearing becomes much more attuned. So when your hearing is attuned people used to know about relatives passings, coming, going you know hundreds of miles away because they're spiritually attuned to people. So we have the spiritual ability but we're not using them because of the devices and because of the distractions of shaitan. InshaAllah. As uh, Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa You had mentioned that in the last days people will be possessed by shaitan. Will animals, particularly pets, also be possessed? Interesting because in the animals we have a teaching from Mawlana Shaykh that the mercy of Allah is that because He loves this creation He doesn't ask the animals to eat us. But in the last days when Allah becomes angered by creation the command changes. And the command comes that, eat them. And as a result of eating them the, we become the, the prey for all, all these creatures, right? So we've discussed that maybe 15 years ago, they've even made shows about that. Right now the immensity of mercy that we can't understand. When Allah tell the ants, eat them, I'm very angry at this creation. Can you imagine the billions and trillions of ants in everyone's backyards, where they even come from we can't understand their numbers. And if they decide they're coming to your house to eat you and nothing will stop it, who can stop that? Just the ants, the cockroaches, the bees, the spiders, every type of insect, that's before you got to the big creatures in which every bear, raccoon, squirrel, birds all coming towards humans to be angered by them and that's a command from Allah that no longer my mercy upon them that my qadab and anger. If Allah become angry at this creation Allah will make all creation to become angered at them and as a result they can't even understand what would come after them. And again except for those whom I have my d Divine love upon them. Those whom Allah loves then nothing touches them, nothing comes after them because they're all under Allah's command. That's again in these oceans of faith that people can't understand. Who commands all these creatures? That's one of the big signs of Allah Why don't these roaches and these flies and these ants and these birds, why don't they come after your house and try to eat you every night? 
they're not scared of anything. If Allah wants them to come, they will come in millions. As much as you spray, they will come millions more. What stops them from doing that? Because Allah hasn't sent that command. So when we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, we don't know the extent of what it means that in my name, most compassionate and most merciful, that how much I'm protecting your creation because I love your creation. Otherwise, I would have made all my other creation to eat you. And I think there was a movie with Will Smith, he landed on a version of earth in which that was the case that everything wanted to eat humans. So they walk the river, all the creatures were coming to eat them. From the, the snakes in the water, leeches in the water, anywhere he was walking things were coming to eat him as a food, as a food source. So more motivation to make the connection and for Allah to be happy with us <laughs> and buy lot, lots of pest, pest sprays and <laughs> stuff like this. <laughs> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how can we help other people without taking on their burdens and interfering with Allah's tests for them? Yeah, unless it's your, your children and, and a very close loved one, it's best to deal with ourselves first. You know, you can't give what you don't have and you first have to save yourself on a, on a plane that's going down. The, they keep telling everyone that put the mask on yourself before you put it on anyone else because by the time you're playing with the mask for somebody else, you've already gone unconscious. So our life is of that same reality that am I putting all my practices, spending all my time I reach a state of satisfaction which Allah is satisfied, happy with me, I feel that light, I feel that energy and now I can go out and deal with other people and try to teach them without affecting my own spirituality. Because if I haven't made the connection and I talk to two people, we get emails all the time, please explain this taweez, why is this taweez like this, like you, you, why do you have to explain it to people? You wear the taweez. And you don't have to go around and, and say, look what I have and do you want one and you got to get this and then keep getting into arguments because we're in a time of immense uh, ignorance. They do the same thing for Mawlid, that why you have to have a birthday, why it's the whole way of our way. So this way becomes more and more complicated, more and more darker, so best that we build ourselves, do our practices, sanctify ourselves, put the security upon ourselves and uh, that's it. And who likes it, likes it, alhamdulillah, ahna wa sahna. And then once we're strong and we have a strong belief and strong understanding and we know all these hadiths, we know all these realities and say, no this is completely the way of Ahlul Sunnah, Ruqya is completely the way, tabarak and blessing is completely the way, all of Hajj is that, why do you go for Hajj? Why do you touch the black stone? This could be any stone, you can go to your backyard and play with stones, why do you touch those black stones? Why do you go to the maqam of Sayyidina Ibrahim and, and there's two footprints in concrete and what are all these tabaraks and blessings? That is our way. Our life is to seek out blessings and as a result of a path of humility Allah dresses us. You can go get water from Costco, why do you need zamzam? Well, because Allah put blessings in the zamzam, why He put blessings in the zamzam? Why do He put blessings? His reality is that it's coming from the kawthar. So it means the, the way of this tariqahs, the way of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah and its realities, then this is the way of all these ulama. But now we're in a, a man's ignorance under the auspices of uh, Dajjah that he has confused everybody and as a result people are all confused. That's why tariqah is that you follow it, you take the practices, you follow it and the, the guidance and the light will begin to come into the hearts of servants, that time they'll understand, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi, I was going in different tariqahs with my friends for some time but now I'm firm with this tariqah, I like this tariqah a lot. Now he asked me to go to that other association, what should I say to him? Now you, before you were in other tariqahs, now that you like this tariqah, he's asking you to go to other tariqahs, <laughs> yeah that's it, <laughs> yeah. That you know, that's like anything else. 
that you you stand the risk of going anywhere and losing your connection, especially if you sound like you're very new and you don't have a connection. And you just end up bouncing around as a part of a social experience with friends, then you know, you, you stand the risk of losing your connection. And that's why if you have so much time to do all of that, then you know, you, you got to sort of figure out what you want to do. It's best to spend the time that you have studying the tariqah, studying these practices, making your connection, being firm on your connection, spend the time that you have to watch the videos, connect with the live audience and learn from that subject. So much knowledge is coming out that I don't see how anybody has time to study anything else. That are you taking notes on all these videos and just tuned in in the last two years? Well, there's 10 more years of you to be watching because we have videos for what, 12 years now? online. So you should be sort of filled with the curriculum. So it's like enrolling at Harvard, Stanford or one of the top universities have a huge caseload and they say, Shay, can I also go to UCLA down the, the block and, and take a couple courses there? Must be like an outstanding student. You've like got all your caseload is done, finished, you've mastered all of that and you have time now to take courses at another university. or you didn't sign up and you don't have any caseload, you don't really have any curriculum and you're just sort of, you know, the student in the back that didn't really enroll but he's coming to the courses for observation. That's different. Then you'd be ending up observing in, in different places all the time. It's best to enroll and to take the path seriously, take your initiation, give your financial support and start studying, watch one to two videos a day, start writing and you know, make the connection inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi mm, Wa alaykum as salaam uh, During the zikr is it better to stay still or move the head? Depends on how you can keep your focus. That at times you may be meditating and connecting and you, you stay still, at other times you're not connecting that much and you make your zikr with your tasbih and however you're comfortable. And you try to do, you know, you may have a few minutes of clarity, a 10 minute feeling of connection and then the rest you just do your zikr and again it's nothing uniform. Every servant is on their own on how Allah dress them and, and bless them and the level of patience and, and uh, what's their surrounding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Have a question about the veil of guidance 5,000 times. Must we recite it in one sitting or in the whole month? No, you can recite it throughout the whole month. That these tajallis of this month is the zikr that Prophet is under by the nazar of Allah That these hijabs and 12 hijabs is what Allah is dressing the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad on this month. Subhanahu man huwa yazal wa yazil wa yazal what's the tajalli of this month. <clears throat> For example, we go to the app and you click under the month of Shabban, Subhanahu man lam yazil wa la yazal, glory be to him whose existence does not cease and who does not vanish. And this is what Allah dressed upon the light of Sayyidina Muhammad means Allah's zikr upon the light of Prophet on the 72 and this is the name of Prophet al-Makeen, the firm. And Ismullah the dressing this name of al-Makeen is Mu'akhir, the one who delayer, the delayer of punishment that tajalli is dressed by Allah upon the light of Prophet So by reciting that tajalli throughout the month, little bit every day if you wish, is that, Ya Rabbi dress me from these lights that you dressed upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that that dress is the secret of his eternity, means that light and that arwah in which doesn't vanish and doesn't need to be uh, fed. Uh, is the realities of the light of Prophet that Allah is dressing that light with. So each month, subhanahu man huwa khaliqa nur, that Allah was 
was giving the dhikr upon the light of Prophet saying, Subhana man huwa khalaqa nu, glory be to me O my created light. Means he was dressing that light upon that reality of the soul of Prophet So these are the ingredients of Nur Muhammadi over these 12 months. So that we want to take that blessing is that we also may join in that understanding. You can say it in your salah, you can do however you want that let me to be dressed by these blessings. For Ramadan comes, SubhanAllah man huwa qadir wa muqtada, what's the, the dress for Ramadan? Subhanahu man taqarrab bil qudrati wal baqa. Subhanahu man taqarrab bil qudrati wal baqa. So then that's very powerful zikr in Ramadan. It's all about the ocean of power. So then throughout Ramadan, you may be wanting to make that dhikr in the salah, you can make that dhikr, that you can make that in your sujood. Subhanahu man taqarrab bil qudrati wal baqa. Subhanahu man taqarrab bil qudrati wal baqa. Because you want to take the the dress from Allah upon the Muhammadan reality. So means these, these zikrs then have a tremendous power. Whether you sit and meditate and, and do a hundred a day in Ramadan, that's a very powerful dhikr to be making in taraweeh, that they're reciting the taraweeh. And then when you're, you're going into sujood, you can make that in your sujood to Subhana man taqarab al qudrati wal baqa. And then you meditate on that, that uh, zikr to be dressed by the oceans of power, draws near to the ocean of power, subhanahu man taqadrab bil qudrati wal baqa. The one whom draws near to the ocean of power. So means alhamdulillah these are all the, the blessings that Allah is sending eternally upon Nur Muhammadi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Is blockchain and cryptocurrency good for us? Good for us? I don't know good for us <laughs> but it, <laughs> it is something that we, we want to make sure we understand and that we're involved in. That uh, the Dajjal system is going to be implemented, this is financial system. When he claims his… his universal government and his worldwide government and his one way, that is the system that is coming. So their whole concept of decentralizing and making NFTs and smart contracts is to give the appearance of, we don't need intermediaries anymore, we'll make it through these contracts. But there will be one person who has the key in which they call the key holder. The key holder will know every single contract, every single aspect of that blockchain will be known by the key holder. And that, that then is the understanding for the dajjal. But either way everything will be decentralized, there'll be no need to go to a bank because they'll be doing it through smart contracts and they call that DeFi, decentralized finance. All of these systems is the da da dajjal financial system that will be coming into place. And as a result of that, the yes, many, many currencies will become non-existent and everything then will be based for his arrival. So that system that will be implemented then it's important for the Muslim community to know how it operates and how to operate within its operation so that the charities and the programs that we have also to be implemented with those systems, not to be taken by surprise. But alhamdulillah that uh, the guidance of awliyaullah that they guide and they teach and they give an understanding. So alhamdulillah that we have to be the, the strongest in everything and in every aspect inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yaseekun Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Muhammadillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Bisir Surat Al Fatiha